It, well, it's like our hometown, as we said, so it felt like a safe environment um, for you guys. But uh, I think for me, it was like I get to experience different parts of Korea that I didn't know. And yeah, I got to see the whole environment there. I thought that was quite amazing for me. What is your favorite quality about your character? And also go first. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to take all of them first. Yeah, uh, oh wait, I, I'm, 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 I really love Q because, um, I don't know, I feel like he's kind of like the, obviously you guys only watched the first episode, but you'll get to know him more if you continue to watch the series, but Q is kind of like the glue that holds this group together. I feel like he's really important to the dynamic. Kitty would absolutely fall apart without you. Exactly. That is very true. That's what I'm saying. I've always said that. So <laughs> Q, I think like a lot of times for each of these people, I think he's kind of like the, if there was an angel and a devil on their shoulders, he would be the angel, the voice of reason, the moral compass. And I think he's just like really important in terms oh, wow. of like pushing forward the story. You love it. Yeah, you really love I it. love you. Really you really gotta love, love your character. Right? So, exactly. <laughs> Work would not be fun if I hated my job. Like, I love you. He's amazing. Um, I love that he is unapologetic and can take up space which ironically as an actor, I still consciously have to work at. I'm not, like I struggled with that myself. So embodying Yuri, I just learned a lot from her. So that was my favorite. Well, for me, to be honest, I don't think like Jay is the most charming guy in school. And I don't think, I think he's just like kind of like a ordinary guy. But what I love about him was that like, he wanted to win someone's heart with sincerity, with not like something else. Sincerity would be like the one thing. That yeah, I he love. has a different girlfriend, but sure. Yeah. You <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yes. yes. hey, I know, I know, I know. No one knows. I know. But I know. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. You'll find out. Don't worry. Yeah. It might. Yeah. It's. I guess. It's, everything I've is not what it seems. Already said too much. So <laughs> it's not what it seems. Stop talking. What it looks like. I just, so what was the question again? I kind of like about your character. <laughs> I was just so listening to it. I was like, oh, well, well. Sorry. I'm glad we were so captivating. What do you here. like about your character? Oh, right. Um, I think <laughs> um, I think he was very confident, and which I didn't really have that when I was young. So I got to play how I wish I was supposed to be like when I was in high school or something. So yeah, confidence of my character. You're I like would the say, most confident person. I know. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, really? But um, for Kitty, I feel like she doesn't ever apologize for how she's feeling throughout the whole series. And even though it's really overwhelming sometimes and can be very scary for her, she still gives herself the space to figure out what she's going through and figure out how she's feeling. And that can be difficult to be honest with yourself and honest with the people in your life. But Kitty definitely tries to always follow her heart and do what feels right for her. So I'm, I'm very proud of her. And I, I love that part about her. So and to all the boys, Kitty famously loves you called. What is your favorite Asian snack? Anything from like a Chinese bakery, I go crazy for always like just all, like a bolo bao. I don't know if anybody knows what these are or like, right? And like sesame balls, so good. Wiener buns never gets old. I could go on. The whole bakery, like always. Every time I drive by, I'm like, mom, can we please go? Yeah. Um, like favorite Asian snack or Korean snack? Asian. Okay, good, okay. So, um, I'm half Filipino. Um, nice. Yay. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, Pinoy pride, am I right? <laughs> um, so I grew up with like a lot of ube flavored stuff. And my favorite thing is probably like that ube pie like kind of thing. I don't know what it's called, but ube, anything ube. Um, I think my go-to at a convenience store is peperu. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and like street food wise, I love um, uh, the pot, what do you call it? Oh, the pung. Pung. Yes, pung. Pung. <laughs> which is a, which is a fish shaped 
You oh, showed yes. me that. I remember. I showed you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Like oh, Anna, Anna tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, red beans. Yes. Yes. And paste. Yes. Some people like like with cream, but I don't. Oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say actually there was choco pie in front of oh. the cinema, and that is like. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's my favorite snack and convenience stores, and. Rather than that, I would say like yakwa. There's a oh my god, yeah, so yeah. yeah. There's also a, like a curry. Is it curry? It's there, yeah. It's like a cookie. It's traditional. But it's, it's cookies, but it's more like crummy and sweet and like a bit sticky. That's oh, so the many things. things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try it now. Okay. okay, I was reacting like this because you took mine, then I was like, okay, next up, probably the same chocolate pie. You took that, <laughs> and I was like, oh god, what's going on here? Um, I would say my, another favorite snack of mine is, so I grew up in Hong Kong, so I think I, yeah, woo, 852, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so there's this candy called White Rabbit, I'm not sure if that's Hong Kong yes. or like Chinese, yes. but like, yeah, it was like, Yes. White rabbit candy. I've had it since I was little. I know, I, like, but we freaked out because we saw, we were, yeah, like, the other day they were like at an event we were at. We were like, we must not. take these. I was, was like so filling good. my purse. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when was the first time you felt represented on screen? I'll go first. Go on. Like, hey, um, for me, I think. I grew, I, I, I was born and grew, lived in Korea for my whole life. So I always was represented in Korea on like Korean shows and Korean movies. So I never thought about how important and like how meaningful it is to be represented on screen. But getting to know those kind of things and shooting XOK, okay, like, yeah, I got to know how important it is to be represented and to represent people like you on the screen. Um, okay. Um, honestly, I, so I, I'm, <laughs> this is hard. Um, it's a I, hard question. I grew up as an actor. I started acting when I was five years old. Um, and it wasn't until Exo Kitty came where I felt that I was playing a character that authentically represented myself. Um, I had always been, you know, considered like my look is very ambiguous. So casting directors would kind of put me in a box or try to fit me somewhere where I knew in my heart I didn't. Um, so really being half Filipino, half Iranian, I had never seen representation before. Someone that looked like me on, on TV. Um, so this was such an honor and really, really special for me because I never, ever thought in my career I would ever play a character like you. Do you need tissues, babe? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and I was really, really grateful to our writers who were super open to the conversation because I was cast and Q did not necessarily have like a specific background or anything. And so I talked to Jenny and Sasha and um, it was the first time I had felt like um, writers really wanted that authenticity and um, were willing to change things in the script for me. So I would have to say Exo Kitty was, is the first time I've ever felt represented on screen. <laughs> Okay, who's next? <laughs> um, I think similarly to Minyoung, I grew up mostly in Asia. I grew up between Korea and Hong Kong. Um, that's not a coincidence. We are siblings. We're by siblings. The way. Um, is that not crazy? Yeah. Can we just take a moment? Uh, yeah. I don't know. know. Oh, yeah, you guys don't know. <laughs> But the yeah. first time I found that out, I like fully thought I was being pranked. I was like, yeah, right, what? They, and what's crazy they is casting didn't even know. know. They cast them separately as like, they're great, they're great. And yeah. they're like, they're they related. They both answered like an open call that was like, and they, you like, were in South Korea and you were in And LA, their last names are different, the come up is different. 
It's just so <laughs> weird to me. Out of the thousands of people sister. who submitted. That, I don't think I'm ever gonna get over. No, this that's why I, like, I feel like the show's so special. It's just like everything yeah. meshed so perfectly. And sorry, I didn't mean to steal that. But <laughs> it's, it's freaking I have crazy. to take so the I moment. Love the I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just, I'm not over it still. The first time we met, also we just couldn't stop talking about it. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, like I didn't really think about like Min Young said. When I watch Korean dramas, I am represented by everyone. So I never thought about it. But then obviously when I watch Hollywood movies, it's different. It's like, oh, it's Hollywood. You know, like, oh, okay, white people. You know, it's like, you know, like, I don't really, I didn't ever thought about it growing up, you know? Um, and then, but then, you know, obviously we would notice things like, oh, the only Korean that I've seen is like the villain North Korean guy, you know, like, or something like that, you know? Um, but then because we grow up watching still a lot of Asian content, I never really thought about it until more I guess in my like recent five years um, and then when I moved to this country is when I was like learning about what it means to be a person of color because I didn't even know I was a person of color until I came to this country and it was like whoa okay I have a new identity now <laughs> like what is this like how does the world see me how does this country see me and then I started like really thinking more about it and um, I think that's why like Anthony said, this show is so special because it showcases like everyone, not everyone, but like a lot of people who haven't been represented yet. And they were re they really just brought so many characters to life that we, I think are so refreshing. So, yeah. All right, I'm not going to sit here and give a better answer than that. Um, I think they really topped it off here. So I'm just going to say that this show is really special to me. I'm going to end it here. I feel like for me, just seeing like mixed race families are always fun and like very, like the, the little specific things of like in To All the Boys seeing like a white dad trying to go to Lunar New Year and learn the traditions but feel very out of place and not really know what to do but like want to do it for his children and that kind of stuff. It's like I grew up with a white dad and a Chinese mom and like having having that mix and seeing that is is so exciting. She's like oh my god like that's what, what it looks like in my family and I do that and it's very special and like you guys were saying of also having like in, in this show it's like you, you Sometimes I've seen ethnic characters before, but maybe as like a side character or or a token type of character instead of being like a love interest and being somebody who can be the main character and just like happens to be ethnic and happens to have that race and it's a beautiful part of them, but it's not the only part of them, which I think is also really special. Okay, so what message do you have for audiences who look like you? Feel like. Wait, what do you mean? Look, audiences that look like us. Look like us. Well, look like you specifically. <laughs> oh, well, I, for me, it'll be like different. Oh, okay. than, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, same with like the mixed race thing. I feel like growing up, I was really lucky. I grew up in Vancouver, which is somewhere that has a lot of diversity and a lot of Asian diversity. And I like my high school has tons of halfies and there's there's a lot of mixed kids around me. So I grew up very feeling very accepted in my ethnicity and in my background. And that being mixed kind of could feel like a superpower sometimes. And be like, oh, I got to be a part of two amazing cultures and learn about different traditions from different parts of the world and, and see that as such a positive thing and an exciting thing to teach my friends about and, and embrace that and see all of that. Not that it's like a half and a half, it's like all of it together makes me whole and it's so exciting to get to be a part of multiple beautiful things. So I hope that other mixed kids and mixed race people can see that as being a superpower. Yeah, I mean, um, kind of like piggybacking off of what you were saying as a mixed race kid in the industry, like this is, this is really special for me. So I really hope that people who um, are you know mixed race who feel like they're maybe not enough of something or too much of the other or don't feel like they fit in very much I hope they feel represented I hope they can watch the show and be like oh my god like you know I could I could be up there too you know because I didn't have like a role model growing up to be like oh he looks like me I want to be like him 
So I hope this show provides that for people, young people who are watching, who, you know, don't necessarily feel like they've been given a voice because like our stories deserve to be told too. And I'm really, really happy that, you know, we're getting to tell these stories of different cultures and backgrounds and stuff. So I really hope that people want, or that people who are watching can take that and be like, oh, this, this show's for me. Um, I mean, pretty much they've already said so much. Um, I don't, I mean, <laughs> this show, I guess, like retweet. Yeah, like, like, yeah, whatever they said. It's like, we're getting thin on this thing. That's long. Yeah. Well, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah. 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 Uh, for me, I think it's like specifically what I w wanted like Koreans to like take from our show was like to open their eyes up for like um, many kind of things. Like for example, in Korea, LGBTQ culture is not even like talked and like known. They don't like think about it at all. Not like at all, but like comparing to the states or like North America. So I want people to just know and think about it. Not like saying like, this is right, this, that's wrong, something like that. Just like just think about it, think about the culture. Yeah, keep the conversation yeah. happening. I want that to happen. Um, I would say to people, so I'm gonna put this as a work perspective, like any Korean actors out there, any. Asian actors out there. I would say, you know, learning English is not that bad, right? Like, just, um, it will open different gates for you. That's how I thought, I mean, the people around me, my friends and everyone who's like Korean is Korean. Um, they were like, damn, like, so if you aren't good at English, then you can't get in. I'm like, well, I mean, I don't think so. Like, as long as you know how to speak and know the culture, then you're fine. So I say, well, I wasn't good at English. I'm like, that's all right. Like, uh, but yeah, I would say just uh, have a open perspective about things and just learn a few languages, maybe. <laughs> like it's that easy. <laughs> this weekend. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 giving such bad answers, am I? Like, <laughs> no, 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 you're good. You're good. <laughs> we just love picking on you. <laughs> what was it like getting into the mindset of going off on your own and attending international school as a young teen? Um, I mean, uh, it wasn't really that hard for me, at least, because um, in a way, this experience filming the show was kind of like parallel parallel to my life. We wanted I, to go to international we school We literally too, had like, to like... fly across the world and, you know, put ourselves in a place where we'd be meeting new peers and, and learning new things. So it was very kind of like, um, I don't know, like very similar to what we were filming in a way. I mean, I like to think of it as, I, I didn't go to university. I, I didn't go to college, but um, I love education, and if that's for you, absolutely. But it, it was not for me. Um, but I like to think of that um, experience filming in Seoul, like my semester abroad, in a way. I learned so much. So yeah, that's no. kind of how like I got in the mindset of playing these char yeah, characters. Yeah, you know? I completely agree. It's like, oh, a girl who's going away like from home and facing new challenges and learning how to be independent and figuring out who she is. I was like, that is not a far stretch because that is me in like so many ways and very much like, like you said, paralleled in, in your own life and this is happening and all of us like lived in the same hotel, which I was like, this is like our dorm rooms. Like we can like go down the hall and see each other and like all of those little things. It, it was totally like that. that I was like, oh, I feel like I just went on exchange like for school. It was, it was crazy. So in that way, it definitely wasn't hard to picture it for Kitty because I was like, I know girl, it's me too. Like I'm also there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I also grew up going to international schools, so it was like weird because it was like a flashback, but also, but also very different because I was not the queen bee of the high school or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice to just 
like oh yeah like i and i felt it made me think about my high school days so that was what i did yeah i thought about my high school days too and i i i, I tried to like bring back my memories from canada which happened in, when i was like seven i lived in canada for a year so it wasn't like an international school it's it was just like a canadian school but for me it felt like an international school so i just tried to bring that bring back that memory yeah i mean like living in hong kong so um in an international school you just somehow meet so many people like with different cultures everything right so um it was good to reminisce for a while you know the time when we were filming but at the same time i was thinking Damn, if I had this sort of character, like when I was in high school, I could have been actually popular. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't. Were know. you? No? Not really, no. Okay. Also, popularity <laughs> is okay. not the goal. Like, popularity yeah. doesn't mean everything. <laughs> okay, I think those are all of the questions. Do we have time for one more? I think that's all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of our Q&A session with the incredible cast of Exo Kitty. Thank you so much to our wonderful panelists for sharing their time and insights with us tonight. And of course, a big thanks to all of you in the audience for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Please join us outside for our Netflix Golden Hour reception and be sure to watch Exo Kitty on Netflix on May 18th. May 18th.